What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a live parts hunt. Well, live as I'm doing it and recording it for you guys, but I came across a pretty sweet deal I thought I'd share with you guys and also make it a video that could be uh, hopefully useful for you guys. So I was scouring the used markets in my local area looking for a decent 1080p gamer card to pick up for a friend of mine to actually upgrade his kid's PC and came across a listing from a guy that's selling a GTX 1060 3 gig model. Actually, the same card that you saw me recently do in a recent video of the $600 parts bill. But anyway, he was he had that listed for about 180, which was definitely better than what I ended up buying my previous card for on that video. And I talked him down to 160, and then he hit me right at the end of the negotiation there. Hey, by the way, I actually have three more of these video cards. I thought. Well, okay, let's see what we can do here. So I, I said, you know what? Let me, let me pick them all up for 150 each. So a total of $600 for four video cards. And he agreed to it, so now we are on our way. So we're gonna go pick up those video cards and have a bit of an inventory that I can work with here in some of my PC builds. But also I thought it'd be a pretty good way to you know show you guys a live pickup and as well as show you guys my process for specifically testing out video cards on the that are that come from the used market so we're on our way guys we're gonna pick them up next time you see me here we'll have the hopefully the video cards in hand they'll all be looking good and we'll get those cards tested out alrighty guys got the cards in it looks like by the number of the cards anyway it looks like I hit the mother love I've never bought this many video cards used from someone just off the street but check this out here they are so four GTX 1063 gig cards. All of these cards are the same model, same EVGA model. They're in really good condition. And they even have the stickers on the back so they've not been opened up. And that's for that's the case for every single one of these cards. So they're in very good condition. And actually pretty clean too. So I asked the guy what he used these for. And he was a miner. He said he, uh, and since they're three gig cards, they do still mine. Uh, it just depends on what kind of uh, cryptocurrency you're after he said he was mining ADA and even that is just kind of falling off and it's not worth it anymore so he's getting rid of his stuff but we've got now four graphics cards that are plenty good for some 1080p gaming rigs and he actually said he had another one that he's keeping for himself to build up a, a you know kind of budget little gaming PC so truth be told that these cards are still pretty good for gaming and getting a budget system up and running but that's it for the pickup guys it was pretty quick and easy and uh, everything is there so we are going to take these back home and get them tested and make sure everything is beautiful and working good and these are going to have new homes soon and some gaming pcs much later all right guys so we are back in my studio and first thing i want to apologize for the bad audio there with the wind noise i didn't realize that i had my cell phone that i was recording on there right in front of an ac vent so it sounded like i was holding it out the window so apologies for that and the video format but here we are we've got all four of the graphics cards lined up and my test rig ready to go this is just basically an hp motherboard and some ram and the uh, power supply and basically it's stuff that i took out of an oem that i'm not worried about if something catastrophic happens and it's just kind of throwaway parts so I can throw some parts on it that I don't necessarily trust so let's go through the process of getting all four of these tested I won't do the process each and individually for all four because the process is relatively extensive in time but I at least want to show you the process completely through on one of the video cards and then we'll probably just I'll just check the rest of them off camera but so let's grab one of the cards get it installed on the motherboard and then get everything powered up and see how this goes okay and plug in HDMI to the, oh yeah, this guy was a miner, so he had nothing plugged in. That's funny. At least I got all the port plugs available to me. Plug in HDMI, and then we need PCIe power for the graphics card. Pull that over to that. This is actually just a three pin, which is nice. So not super high power demand here from the video card. Turn on my power supply. And then I should have my power button that I already have plugged into the front panel to power everything on. Okay, there we go. All right, fan spinning on the graphics card. Let's just spin over to my monitor to see if we get a display. Actually, wow, that we weren't fast enough with that. Alrighty, so we weren't quite quick enough to catch any kind of BIOS or just initial boot up there, but this is good. That means that we clearly are getting video from the graphics card. 
I haven't booted up the system in a while, so we are actually going through a kind of a startup repair from the original operating system that I have just installed on a basic hard drive. But I'll cut the video to Windows once it actually boots up here for you guys so we aren't waiting on this forever. All right, guys, so we are in Windows, and with any video card, I would definitely suggest you do a fresh installation of the drivers, and the best way of doing so is to use DDU uninstaller. So what we'll do here is and actually to launch DDU uninstaller is you want to launch into safe mode. So we're gonna hold the, down the shift button, click on Windows and then click restart. So that way we'll load into the boot up options that allows us to get into safe mode and then run DDU uninstaller from there. All right, here we go. So in order to do a safe mode boot up, we'll just go to troubleshoot, we'll go to advanced options and we'll do startup settings and then hit restart. And then this should prompt us with a new menu to select a startup option here in just a moment. All right, perfect. So now what we're gonna do here is just hit the number four button on the keyboard to load up into safe mode. All right, guys, so good indicator. Once you are in safe mode too, you'll have this black looking screen here in your Windows version at the top. So then what we're gonna do is come over to our DDU uninstaller and this can be downloaded from, if you just do a quick Google search DDU uninstaller, it's a very common application. So you shouldn't have any problems Googling that. But since this is my test system, I already had this on here, I'm just going to basically scrub the system for any display drivers. I don't remember the last video card I plugged in here, so I wanna get it as native bare as possible. So we'll just start off with coming over here to GPU, and I'm gonna select to uninstall any Radeon or AMD drivers that exist on the system. And what I usually always do after I've got my selection there is I do a clean and reboot, the one that's highly recommended on the screen. And then what it's gonna do, it's gonna basically run through the certain options that it's running through right now. It's scanning for files and all that stuff, whatever it's do, doing automatically, and then it'll actually reboot. So we're just gonna let it run. Alrighty, DDU has ran through at least the AMD driver installation. We're coming back up into Windows normally. It looks like uh, I think I'm getting hit with an update here, so lovely. <laughs> Stand by. So now we should have all AMD drivers uninstalled. We're gonna do the same exact process for NVIDIA drivers. So we're gonna restart the computer into safe mode again, and then run DDU again on NVIDIA. So since I already kind of took you through that process with AMD, it's exactly the same for NVIDIA. You just select NVIDIA dropdown. We'll cut to where we're at after that is complete. A few moments later. Alrighty, we are back up on Windows now. So we have both the AMD and NVIDIA drivers completely uninstalled. This is basically now at this point a bare driver that the OS is using to run the GPU and obviously the GPU is functioning because we have a display. So one other thing too to check real fast just to ensure to kind of see what the operating system is seeing in terms of what is installed as far as the GPU goes. We can just open up our task manager and take a look at that. So if you just right click down your taskbar, click task manager, and then if we click on performance, okay. So we're actually not seeing anything, so it's really not detecting any type of display hardware. That's not necessarily a bad thing, so let's give it the opportunity. What is likely going on right now is Windows is scrubbing the internet for a driver to update, so it's likely we could see some screen flickers or whatever, but what's best to do since we know what display driver or hardware that we have, let's go download it. All right, so here we are on NVIDIA's website, and it's actually kind of already detected what we have in the system, so that's good. So we're gonna just click the search button. We didn't actually have to plug in any drop downs and click download to get the game ready driver. Alrighty, so the installer is saying we are now done. So let's just do a quick little verify, go back to our task manager. So even though we got this as detected in in the task manager, I usually like to just give the system one more clean reboot. NVIDIA sometimes doesn't really make you do that, but AMD is usually pretty prevalent with reboots after driver installs. So we're gonna do that, get it on a nice fresh start for some benchmarks. Alrighty, so we got a fresh reboot. And the thing that I want to advise everybody to get for something like this is get MSI Afterburner. So that way we can keep an eye on everything that's going on with the GPU. Task manager is nice as far as just detecting it and seeing the usage and stuff, but MSI Afterburner burner is going to tell us much, much more. 
And what we're particularly wanting to make sure that we keep an eye on is obviously temperatures and boost clocks. You got some basic gauges here, but uh, that's only gonna give you the current. So we can detach that data into a separate monitoring window. So if we blow that up here, now we've got things that we really wanna see, core clock speeds, memory utilization, all that stuff. So these will be used as a reference point after we run a benchmark on the video card to ensure that we don't see some weird anomalies here. But the things that we're gonna use for benchmarking, and one that's my typically my favorite is Heaven Benchmark. You can use Furmark. Uh, basically, you'll get the same result. So either one of those two should be fine. Furmark is a little bit more punishing. And really what we're just looking for is loading up a 3D application to ensure that we don't have any artifacting or anything that looks weird in terms of anomalous behavior with a graphics card. So I'm gonna open up Heaven Benchmark here. And basically, I'm gonna just try to hit it as hard as I can. It should, yep, already my settings are there. So I set it to ultra extreme. I'm I'm just looking to hit it as hard as I possibly can to ensure that it's going to be a stable GPU for a system build. So let's go ahead and click run there. So running this in windowed mode is also what I would say be preferred because that way you can monitor with MSI Afterburner running alongside the benchmark here. So it's about loaded up and here it goes. Now, all you gotta do is after it's here is just let it run. And from here, I'm just going to, this is, you can technically take a benchmark and get a score, but if you just let it run here on the open menu, it's just going to loop endlessly until you stop it. So what I, I typically do to ensure that I've got a good stable system is I'll let this run for 20, 30 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm also monitoring things like, is the fan ramping up like it should? Is it making excessive noise, et cetera, et cetera. But here's where we can keep an eye on those things and let that run. So we'll let that run for 20 minutes and let's just take a quick peek at the GPU itself here. Just make sure everything is nice and dandy. It is just sitting on the bench like this so it's not, you know, a case or anything. So it, all, the only airflow is it just open airflow. But right now I'm just listening for is the fan running fine as expected. It should be at about 60% right now and I don't hear any type of noise. But here's a quick listen for you guys. So it sounds like it's running just fine. I don't hear any anomalies. So the idea here is just let it run 20 minutes and ensure, watch the screen and check our graphs, make sure we don't have any anomalous behavior. And I'd say we're good to go on this video card. Also guys, one other quick mention too, what you wanna be aware of with your video card too, especially if you bought it from a miner because you're not real sure what they did, if they flash BIOS or whatever, you wanna be making sure that the clock speeds are hitting the targets that it should be. So with this GTX 1060, it should be hitting anywhere between 1550 and 1800 megahertz on the core clock. And it looks like right now we're running at about 1646 and that's about the average or so. So looking pretty good there. 20 minutes later. Alrighty guys, so we are coming up on the 20 minute mark and we are looking beautiful here. So we've got about 20 minutes of continuous full 100% GPU torture basically going on here. We've basically seen our clock speed maintain around the 1830-ish mark the entire time. So that's boosting into the area that it needs to, that we would expect. Other things to be looking for obviously is just anomalous behavior on the screen, maybe some screen flickers or artifacting. Didn't see any of that going on. And obviously we wanna watch our temperatures. Now it is getting into like the 80s, uh, dipping into the low 70s here at full power. That is a bit on the warm side. And I know these cards do run a little bit warm, but at the same time, this is a full on, basically a torture test. So I imagine while gaming, we would see slightly lower temperatures. If we think we need to, we can repaste the card, but I don't see a particular need to at least repaste it for now. We're just looking for stability. So now we basically got to do it three more times. So guys, that is my used GPU testing process that it works for me just about every time to give me a result that I'm looking for. But if you're not 100% convinced that picking up a used GPU is still a viable good thing to do, if you're in a pinch, then check out this video I have for you where actually I take this same exact GPU model and build up a awesome price to performance gaming PC.